Howdy y'all, my name is Brunt Everton, Mist Runner, Troll War of the Mist Runner Tribe, and today I wanted to talk to y'all about Karazhan. Karazhan is the first 10 man raid in the Burning Crusade, and I'm gonna take y'all through here, pull by pull, and talk about how it's done. First things first, you gotta get your consumes up. Get a ready check going. Make sure people are good to go. I've got a major agility elixir, major armor elixir. Spicy hot towel book for that hit rating. Everybody except for one healer is ready. First pull is just a single horse. You might notice I'm dual wielding. That's because I'm a little bit over geared for this content. But it does also demonstrate how hard the stuff in here hits. My armor right now, dual wielding. It's 11.8k with 430 defense right now. I've got some DPS pieces on just for some more threat output. I'm single tank in this place. I can charge pull this, get a thunderclap, get a demo shot, and I can war stomp. Now the DPS have to be careful because we're single tanking, which means if I'm feared or stunned, the aggro may switch to something else. Let's just pull in here and get a challenging shot. Get another thunderclap. Now I've got thread on everything. I'm gonna mark this one with a triangle. I'm also gonna do a concussion blow. I'm gonna taunt the X. I'm using target of target up here to see if I'm holding threat. And we got it. DPS order is Skull X Triangle Square from the raids that I run in. This is a guild run so they know what's up. I don't need to be in comms for this. Want to give a shout out to them? Let me make a guide of this run. I was gonna do a care run and then talk over it. It's not as exciting. If we're going pull by pull, then we can talk about reactions and stuff. And I can also mouse over things and show you all a little bit easier. So really here I'm just doing some cleave revenge, cleave devastate. it's sticking pretty well. Devastate Heroic Strike. And if you're running with another warrior in the group, just make sure you know who's doing which shout. I have them on Shift 3 and H, depending on which is my primary. I'm gonna mark these. You can do a shout, get some initial threat here. 175 threat for a shout. Put a Devastate on Skull, a Devastate on X, and then a Devastate on that Triangle, and I'm gonna go back to Skull. Since that's the primary target. Pulled another horse. I'm gonna mark that one square. I pulled another horse, I'm gonna mark that one Skull. I'm gonna stun this one. I'm just tabbing through, checking to see if I have it, looking at target of target. If I don't, then I taunt. This one's on the healer. But I pulled threat and I got it. Now I'm gonna War Stomp. Counter Priest has a skull. That's fine. If DPS pulls threat on skull, and that's the focus target, if it's gonna die soon, that's fine. A huge part of having good threat management is being able to communicate to your DPS what they should be focusing on. Because then you can line up your threat output with their DPS output. So here I got a Devastate Heroic on the skull, and then I got a Devastate Heroic on the X. And I'm gonna cleave revenge, devastate, cleave. Cleave, devastate, cleave, devastate. Demo shout if you need it. Devastate heroic. If you had a shield on, you'd be shield slamming. Every time it's up. DPS order is set. Don't forget your cookies. Good to check the team's mana. And all that I pull this into a thunderclap, into a demo shout, cleave devastate. And I'm on the skull. I'm gonna thunderclap again. I am specting to improve thunderclap. Gives you a good bit of threat. And it also reduces more attack speed than regular thunderclap. I do have Thunder Fury equipped as well, and you might be like, whoa, why do you thunderclap when you have Thunder Fury? 
the AoE buff, or debuff, sorry, of Thunder Fury is the Nature Resistance debuff. So that doesn't help me reduce the attack speed of anything other than my primary target. The primary target of Thunder Fury is consumed in a Cyclone, which reduces their attack speed, which is stronger than regular Thunderclap, but weaker than improved Thunderclap. So I get a regular Thunderclap into a Demo Shout, and then I'm going to look for Skull. It's stunned by the Rogue, which is great. I'm going to devastate this one. Tabin through. Thunderclaps. Tabin through. The Skull's not on me. I'm going to taunt it. I'm stunned. I'm going to cleave. And then I'll mix in a War Stun because I'm a Torrent. Alright, we're getting up to the boss here, so I want to think about ending this fight with 100 Rage. So I'm going to ease up on the gas here with my abilities. Just try to make sure I hold threat with the minimum amount of rage expenditure. Good. Got a nice amount of rage. Let's get a King's Defender on this. And I'll also use an Adamantite Sharpening Stone. And I'll also put a Greater Rune of Warding on my chest piece. This is pretty nice. 25% chance per hit of giving you some damage absorption. Just going to soften the damage that you take. I still have my food buff. Let's ready check. Just gave them a reminder to watch threat because I'm tanking both. You're pulling. I'm just going to open with the Devastate Heroic. Get some initial threat. Mark this one. And I'm gonna get ready for the guy to show up. Match him. There he is. I tabbed over. Marked him X. I got some initial threat on him. Let's get a demo shout and a thunderclap. Reduce some of that incoming damage. The people should be stacked up on these so they don't get charged by the horse. There is a knockdown stun effect. And they're hitting me for about 2.2k. 2.9k there. I'm looking at the threat here. They're getting close, but they're about to combine now. So I'm going to work on the threat on Skull. Just devastate Heroic Revenge with the Cleave. Devastate with the Cleave. And there's a Bloodlust. Okay, they're teamed up. Devastate Heroic. Demo Shout. They resisted. Thunderclap. Knock down. Get a demo shout. And how about we party? Let's do a recklessness. Go back to defensive stance and a haste potion. And then we'll devastate heroic. Check out this threat. You crit every time. Sixty K threat. Passing it, and then we're stunned. Boss doesn't hit too hard. This guy does drop your Biss Bracers as a tank. Van Braces of Courage. Very good item. These are actually Phase 2 Biss. So don't be sleeping on that roll if you're a tank. Steelhawk Crossbow is not bad either. Gives you some hit rating. Attack power. Let's go get Morose. People doing the loot rolls. One thing to bear in mind too is whoever is back doing loot mastering, they're not going to be present for this pull. So that's one of our healers. Pull this carefully. I'll do it ready check. This room has group packs, patrols that are elite, and then some five packs that have an elite that is a mind control. So be careful here. Just watching the room. You can do a target marker on some of the patrols to make it easier. Just to see him moving about. Get a war stomp here. Do some of that incoming damage. I'm just tabbing through and seeing what people are targeting. 
go ahead and pull this valley. So the route that I'm going to show y'all is going to take us through Servant's Quarters, which not every raid is going to need to do. So if you don't need that, you can just skip that part. But for now, we're going to try to pull to Morose. Morose has a very good loot table. We can skip that. If you do pull this pack, you need to kill the Retainer first. The Retainer is the one that deals some uh, mind control crap to your team. Probably the most likely pull to wipe you in here. All of the units in that pull are also elite, which means that if the Clothies are just going ham and AoEing, they will die. Clothies can usually hold some non-elites on them, and that's fine. But if they're tanking elites, they will die. Okay, there are a couple elites coming through here. I want to make sure this doesn't change. So I'm going to stand here. I'll last stand to give my healer some time. And then I'm going to focus my threat on these elites. Thunder clapping. Demo shouting. I have plenty of threat on the skull. Let's make sure I have the X. I do. And that's the first death of the run. Put on two elites in a group pack. The desire to Zug is strong. You should know this about DPS. All right, I'm gonna pull this valet. As soon as he gets that res, he's up. Um, waiter. These don't hit too hard. Still good to put the demo shot on. 1776. Hey, good year. Out of curiosity, people in the YouTube comments, what country are you from? I'm from the USA. These hit very hard. I'm going to respect it and put a shield on. They do an ability where they bonk a bottle of wine over your head and you get stunned. And whenever you're stunned, you can't mitigate as well. So they'll hit you really hard. There we go. I'm stunned. Look at the damage I'm taking. You just gotta spam the tank when that happens. And also, DPS, you should be careful. Did you know that a tank can't really build much threat when they're stunned? Doing some shouts. One fun trick you can do is get a shield spike. This one's elite, I'll pick it up. War stomp. I have a fell steel shield spike 26 to 38. That means that whenever I successfully block an attack, it deals 25 to 38 damage. I have two shields. One of them is for AoE threat. One of them is for tanking the big stuff. The one that's for tanking the big stuff has a stam enchant on it. 18 stam. Now, Dory Legacy to Vendor. For a general gear assessment, you can tank care in Prebis. It's just a lot less comfortable. You can't really cut corners when it comes to itemizing for threat. The first care that I ran, I tanked this in mostly Dreadnought. These are immune to taunt, so if you pull threat, it's yours. Cal Classic is tough, though. He put on a shield. That's one of the things you could say a warrior has in terms of utility. That other DPS do not, or some DPS do not. Is if they do pull threat, they can go into defensive stance and have a shield on them. That's going to up their survivability by a good margin. boss here. There are four ads plus the boss. Usually we just cleave him down. We'll give him a raid warning. Make sure that we're all 
set. I will start this off with a shield. Looks like everybody's ready. Okay, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna focus my initial threat on Morose. Let's get a shout. A thunderclap with a shield block. A demo shout. A shield slam Morose. And then I'm gonna work on threat on the adds. I have skull. Now I'm gonna let them get skull. And I'm gonna work on X. Just make sure I have threat on the other ones. Thunderclap and again. Just tabbing through, making sure they're attacking Brunt. This one's attacking Brunt. It's a physical one. I can disarm it. Squares on the DPS warrior, but I'm gouged. So I can't do anything about that. The DPS need to be ready. If you get gouged, well, it's going to whoever's second in threat. So they need to be prepared to pop a defensive. Now that it's just Morose, I'm dual wielding. He doesn't hit super hard. The main danger of Morose is the scourge effect when he goes and attacks someone else. But as you can see, the DPS warrior here, he still has two-hander on. So you don't really need a huge reaction. If you're a plate wearer. If you're a mage, you can ice block. Warlocks can soul shatter. I'm just doing Devastate Heroic Revenge. Keeping up Demo Shout, Thunderclap. He vanishes, and he's going to put a Garrote on somebody. He doesn't wipe threat, though, so he should come back to me. Yep, he's back on me. Just right after putting that Garrote. He does an Enrage here. He just crit me for 4.8, 4.8. 2.4 regular hit. Gouged. So it goes on the Warlock, second in threat. Enhanced Shaman, back on me. Shamans can put on a shield if they pull threat. If they have a macro for it. Pretty good boots. Morose drops the Biss um, belt for tanks, but it's an extremely low drop rate, and I've never seen it. Would be. This. Crimson Girdle of the Indomitable. Very good. Currently I'm wearing this. Just for threat. And then if I'm on a mitigating fight with a shield. I have the Girdle of the Immovable. Slave Pen's Heroic. Alright. So we're going to do Servant's Quarters here. If we were not doing Servant's Quarters. We would pull through this room. Remember to kill those retainers first. They're a little bit taller than the other ones. And there are two pulls with those. Be sure to kill the retainers first. It's kind of like the time loss controller in Set the Calls. If you don't focus the MC unit, then it's going to grab your strongest player and kill the raid. If they, pull, if they grab the tank, then uh, it's threat all over the place. If they grab the healer, then you don't get heals, etc. Ready check. People love ready checks. Alright. So servants quarters, you got these spider packs. Just going in with a thunderclap and a demo shout. They put a poison cloud thing down. You wanna be careful not to stand in that. It slows you and does some bad stuff to you. So thunderclaps, cleave revenge. Getting a commanding shout. A new one comes in, tab to that. With my gaze, I'm looking at target of target. Some people ask me, hey Brunt, how do you play without health bars? Tab target and target of target. You can even tab through and mark stuff too. Okay, thunderclap on these. Tabbing through. That one's attacking the mage, so I taunt it. Thunderclapping again. Demo shouting again. Demo shot is nice because if the mage does pull threat, then they're hitting him for less. Tap through. Grab that one. Grab that one, yep. We got him. Movement speed reduced by 75% when you're in that. 
give him a second for mana. The physical don't really need a break. Rogue's got lots of energy. Got that thunderclap on all of them. Putting up commanding shot again. As a general rule of World of Warcraft, bats pretty much always do a silence effect. Or at least that's what I would expect. At least reach and stuff. As a warrior, if you do get silenced, you can no longer shout, which makes sense. You also can't thunderclap. some poison novas and stuff. Poison effects on everybody. Cleanse that if you can. And to get the Servant's Quarter boss to show up, you just have to kill a certain number of stuff. So just keep an eye out for him. You do get rep for these if you're not exalted. But the only reason people really do Servant's Quarters is if you have a Shadow Priest. There is the Biscayne Bracer that could drop. It's a very low chance, but it could drop. So if you have a Shadow Priest friend and they really want it and you want to help them out, Servant's Quarters. The Shadow Priest that we have running here, he's done a whole lot for the guild. Back in AQ, he would use Mind Vision to look for a good lockout without a whole bunch of the mind control fear mob things. So he would look for good trash packs and he can reset if there were too many of them. Which ended up saving us a lot of time. That's the thing with helping people out. Sometimes people help you out a whole bunch and they don't ask for anything. But then, later on, you can help them out. That's a big part of what makes teams so strong. Bats coming in. Raider Shadow Bat. Just doing Devastate Heroic. Revenge Heroic. Thunderclap. Do a 50% movement slow. I'm tabbing through, seeing what they're targeting. If there's one elite targeting a DPS warrior, it's often fine. Sometimes they're even happy about that because they get more rage. Sometimes the boss will spawn over there. Or we may need to kill more stuff, we'll see. I'm just devastating, cleaving, thunderclapping, and demo shouting. Looks like they don't do a silence. This hasn't been happening. They just do that wing thing, which slows you. Mana looks fine. Sometimes the boss will spawn at the end of that hallway as well. See that one going on the healer. I taunt it. And I thunderclap. I'll mix in a war stomp. Some Torin. Demo shout. Tabbing over. I taunt this one. warrior, that's fine. This one's on the mage, I'll taunt that. Looks like this one did a phase out. Oh, it's called a phase hound. No wonder. The phase hounds phase out. More like aptly named hound. Alright. 
four pack, Thunderclap, Demo Shout, Cleave. The nice thing about Cleave and Heroic Strike is their next attack. So you can hit the button at the same time as you hit other stuff. And that's a big part of why Warrior is the most mechanically intensive tank there is. You've got so many things that are off the GCD. Shield Block is off GCD. Heroic Strike, Cleave is off GCD. Blood Rage is off GCD. So if you're playing Warrior to the maximum, you got the highest APM in the raid. Period. There's some other classes that come kind of close with tempo. Combat Sword Rogues are pretty fast. Hunters sometimes, if they're melee weaving and they're really good, that's a pretty high tempo class. Fury Warrior is pretty high tempo. And so is Cat Feral. Cleave Devastate. One thing that I've harped on a whole bunch that is worth mentioning here too is having good hotkeys. You notice I'm not clicking stuff. The only things I click would be out of combat buffs to myself. But if I'm in combat, I don't want to have to pull my mouse down, down here. I need to be moving my camera. I need to be ready to click stuff and respond. So this is actually the one that you do want for the Shadow Bracers. The Fellhound one. Rokad the Ravager. He's going to drop a Bracer, I think. We'll see if it's the right one. hitting me pretty hard. I'll just last stand. Smooth out the start of the pull. Last stand is a 10 minute cooldown, so I would say in Karazhan you should use it very liberally. Shield wall and recklessness are more of your big decisions of do I feel like there's going to be a tough fight coming up pretty soon. For last stand, since it's 10 minutes, you can use that a whole bunch over the course of a 2-3 to three hour raid, depending on how swift your team is. doing some heroic devastate getting tons of threat it's not hitting too hard yep cuffs of the eagle so most of the time you're not going to get what you want from here just drop some epic bracer with random stats most of the time it's garbage but every once in a while you get the bis bis we're going to go up this passageway now. It's going to take us up by Maiden. Karazhan is pretty cool with all the different side passageways and stuff. Very big instance. Alright, let's just mark these patrols. Star and circle, just to get a better visual. I'm gonna pull these. Team's formed up. I'm gonna pull it back. You can disarm these. They summon a little hound. So I just tab over and get some initial threat on each of those. Just doing revenge. Cleave. Devastate heroic. Shots are good. Alright. I can just pull this one. I'm gonna need to fight him later anyway. one. You can skip this pack on the right hand side. they are demons and undead which means you could banish the demons if you have a warlock or you could I don't think you can enslave them. But you can banish the demons and you can shackle the undead if you're in a group that needs CC and you do that pull. We'll fall, fall back here get this one first. And another servant. Must have come through this way. Alright, we got this one now. 
Mark him. Mark this one. You can stun these. Concussion blow is good. You can also disarm. My food buff just wore off. Let's get that. Spicy Hot Towel Book. 20 hit rating. Hit rating is one of the toughest stats to come by as a tank in phase one. The gear that we get is really good for mitigating, and stuff in BC hits really hard. But it doesn't have as many hit expertise kind of stats. We can skip that right pull. Just jumping through here. There is that patrol wandering around, so we need to keep an eye out for that. The patrol walks into these rooms here. Yep, there it is. So it may pull here. We'll pounce them as they come out. Okay, and someone pulled this pack as well with the totems. So you gotta be aware of that. This is a bit of a traffic jam situation. And really, this is a broader lesson with skips. A skip isn't a skip. If not everyone does a skip, it ends up costing you time. But you shake it off. Go in it again. wonder if they rinsed. We should run through the servants' quarters since we cleared there. A skip is not a skip if not everyone does a skip. One aspect of being a good raider and a good tank is your fortitude and wipe recovery. A lot of times when people wipe, they want to point fingers and blame, well, who did that, who did that? A lot of the time, the person who messed up knows they messed up, and they don't really need to be roasted. Some guilds like to do that, though. Also, remember to stay hydrated. Got hots on. Let's pull it. A tab. Rogue Strike devastate that one. We got good threat. Let's get a Thunderclap. These have an aura that makes your physical damage way less. Now my attacks can heal my target. They also do a Seduce, so put a Tremor Totem down. Thunderclap, Demo Shout, Devastate Cleave, Devastate, Thunderclap, does War Stomp work? It works. Tabbing through, I don't have the square, I taunt it, I tab, I have it. Devastate Cleave, Devastate Cleave. Commanding Shout, where is that? 
Thunder clap went out. Tabbing through, we got triangle. Tabbing through, Baton Square. DPS Warrior can do a lot of cleaving threat between Whirlwind, Cleave, and Sweeping Strikes. So it's not unusual that they'll pull threat on something other than Skull. That's fine. He's doing his part. Alright, we'll use this mob for Rage. Also look at people's mana. Make your mana up. No, oh, food buff. We died. I guess I can tell you what our raid comp is here. So you know the specs and stuff. We got a front warrior. We got an arms warrior. We got a combat rogue. Resto druid. Enhancement shaman. Resto shaman. Holy paladin. Shadow priest. Mage. Fire. Destruction warlock. Ready to check. Alright, Maiden of Virtue. Consecrate. Holy Fire needs to be dispelled. Does a repentance. You need to move the boss in range of the healers. I'm going to mark my healers here. So I can move the boss into them. To wake them up. Alright, we're pulling. Five. Four. Three. Two. Your behavior. Stage road to start. Let's get my commanding shout refreshed. Iron shield potion is the way to go for most fights. In the case that you're overgeared, you can pop a haste potion or a rage potion. Let's just try a haste potion for fun. Let's see what kind of threat we can get. Holy fires cast on people that needs to be dispelled immediately. Holy fire hits really hard. I'm gonna last stand. I got down to 3k HP. For penance, putting them to sleep. I'm gonna pull the boss over to them. Wake up. Wake them up. Alright, last stand's gonna expire. Putting up a demo shout. Thunderclap. Boss resist a lot. Wow. There's a demo shout. The penance again. Must be Can pull. Cleansed. Woke him up. I'm gonna put a shield on here. Shield block. Shield slam. Thunderclap. Challenging shout. I think when repentance hit, then the AoE got him. I think there's also a chain damage effect. Let's see what our combat log says. What happened to me? The Holy Ground ability, which is Consecrate, is hitting for about 200 to 220. Sorry, 200 to 300. The melee hits are about 2.4k. And I was blocking some of them there. Melee for 1.7. Yeah, just holy ground and melee hitting me. Holy wrath for 3.1k. Getting ready to pull again. Check. Start with an AoE pack. I'll pull it. 
Do a commanding shout. Get some initial threat on everything. 167, not bad. Thunderclap. Demo shout to soften them. Tabbing through. Seeing what I got. Front, cow plastic, I tell it. Tabbing through. Front, front. That one's on the mage. That's fine. Okay. Keeping an eye out here. You can pull this. That patrol is there. We'll just mark that. Get a better visual. I'm just doing Devastate Heroic. Once again, reminder, if you're pulling these packs, kill the retainers first. Retainers first. For these ones, you can put down a grounding totem. They will freeze the tank and switch to somebody. And they're also immune to taunt. These are a pain in the butt. Thunderclap Demo Shout. Give my team better chances whenever I get frozen, if I get frozen. Safe. Got him. Nice. Another pull like this. You cannot skip this one, so just pull it back. I'll pull it around here. That we won't have line of sight issues with these pillars. Thunderclap. Demo shout. They're hitting me pretty hard, but I have pretty strong healers and we have three healers. If I only had two healers, or if the healers in the run were not quite so strong, then I'd probably just roll with the shield. You should be able to flex your tank setup depending on the raid that you're in. This guy's in the way. Probably just fast trip pull him. Good catch on that end. Shackle. Under clamp. Demo shout. Reduce incoming damage taken. Kill the skull. Kill the X. Commanding shout. Revenge heroic. Opera event time. Anyone here ever done some theater? Acting, singing, maybe at the same time? Control, pull it. Oh, that wasn't the best. I mark him, thunderclap, shield, shield block, demo shout. These are immune to taunt. Thunderclapping. I'm netted. I'm just gonna tab through, make sure I got as much as I can. You want to pull them out of the spotlight, it does give them a damage bonus. It gives you a damage buff as well. All damage done increased by 20%. Also, these performers do a fire nova when they die. So be prepared for that. This area is pretty cramped, so they don't give you a ton of room to max range. Devastate heroic. I'll just tank a few pulls with the shield on. Just to demonstrate the rotation and such. Having good hotkeys is key to being able to hit all these buttons at once. Cleave, shield, slam, shield block, devastate, revenge, cleave, devastate. Rook, strike, devastate, shield, block, shield, slam, commanding shout. Two pull. Shout to get initial threat, shield, slam, tab, devastate, shield, block, revenge, cleave, tab back to school. Concussion blow, they're immune to stun. You're not allowed in here. 
I'm gonna hold this one. People want to kill this one because it has some recipe or something. I've never seen it drop, but that's the rumor. Stage hand here. Just try to position yourself so you get the damage buff. And they don't. Excuse me. Is there another one? I thought we pulled it. I'm not an actor. Well, I'll give it a shot. All right, let's see what we get. As a tank, what do I want here? Romulo and Julianne. Or Romulette and Julius. Uh, Romulo. I don't know. Whatever. And There's a best threat trinket. To this evening's presentation. Tonight, we plumb the depths of the human soul. Oh, excuse my manners. This is a performance. Lonely girl, trying desperately, with the help of her loyal companions, to find her way home. Oh, this one is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So for this one, there are three different bowls of oatmeal. One that's super hot, one that's really cold, and one that's kind of in the middle. You want to put the fire mage on the cold oatmeal so that it will warm up. You want to put a frost mage on the hot oatmeal to cool it down. And then you can right click the good oatmeal to get a buff. Fear cat, fire straw guy, and then I'll tank the skull in the square. I can fear, intimidate, and shout. Okay, when the X is out, the mage can put it on fire, and it's going to cause it to run around in fear. I'm going to on that one. Alright, now I need to make sure the square is on me. This one hits the hardest. Let's just get it an iron shield potion. So we can bleed this thunderclap it. Demo shout it. Blood rage, bleed, devastate. Rogue strike, devastate. Commanding shout, devastate. Thunderclap, devastate. Cleave, devastate. Demo shout, refresh. Disarm the square? He's immune. But you can try it. Taunt. Trying to build threat. Nice fear. We got heaps of threat on this one. He does a cleave though. Be careful. Whenever these are all down, there's going to be the Wicked Witch of the West. Damn dealers need to do damn. And watch out for the tornado. If you get Romulo and Julianne or whatever and you tank Romulo, you can disarm him. It's actually a game changer for that fight. He hits pretty hard. He'll kill some tanks. I've heard Paladins have a problem with him. And Bears can't disarm either. All right. Maybe slippers. Shoulders. And we keep it moving. Be small pauldrons. These pulls have philanthropists. They're the only elites in these pulls. I like to mark them. They also drop a ton of gold. Get a thunderclap. You would devastate. You no shout. Thunderclap. Cleave. Revenge. And go war stomp. Commanding shout is good. You cleave. We revenge. Health is dipping a little bit low because our healer is loot mastering. That's fine. 
Here's the other philanthropist. I'll catch up in threat, pass him, maybe. Yeah, one gold each person from those philanthropists. That means I have over 10 gold. I'll mark the elite. Thunderclamp. Cleave Revenge, Demo Shout, Cleave Devastate. Are these immune to stun? Yes. Is this one? Two Philanthro- oh no, that's not a Philanthropist. That's a Philanthropist. Okay. My Thunderclamp, my Demo Shout, and my Threat on Skull is pretty good. I'll just do another. Revenge, and then I'll switch to X now. I'm doing Cleave, Devastate. Cleave, Revenge. Thunderclad Demo Shine active every time. It's really crazy the amount of incoming damage you reduce by putting those debuffs on a pack. Improve Thunderclap. Time between their attacks by 20%. Or is it... 25 with talents plant up his skull under clamp it demo shout it 300 attack power attack speed reduced by 20 percent Some ghost poles here. Gotta be careful, there's one over there. People tend to butt pull this one. Oh my god, someone did it. Yeah, be prepared to pull that one. He's hit pretty hard as well. We'll say it's one of the packs where I tend to get killed. A lot of it is because people are just going down the stairs and stuff, and you don't always have the full party ready to go. People open that door all the time thinking that's Nightbane. It happens every week. That's the back, back door entrance. Side door. Which means that if we die at this point, we'll go in the side entrance. That'll catch us up to the progress we've made. Alright, this one will be a rage save. So I'm just checking my buffs here. I'm gonna end the fight with full rage. We have Nightbane coming up. Okay. <laughs> this is the spot. Welcome to Nightbane. This is the toughest boss, probably in this phase. This is where it lands. This exploded barrel is your reference here. So as the tank, I'm going to be here. Let's also take this fight seriously. Mid belt. Mid ring. Mid trinket. Mid bracers. Mid helm. We're good. Alright, this is the fight. Greater Ward of Shielding is good. How long do I have in this Greater Rune of Warding? 12 minutes. Okay, we're good. Alright, let's get a pull. I'll talk y'all through this fight. I've done this with the guild a million times. They know what to do. Alright, combat starts in 35. Nightbane's going to be flying around. The visibility in this fight for a tank is pretty bad. So listen to their calls about if you need to move a little bit to the right or to the left. You can target Nightbane ahead of time. 
Me swooping around. If the melee stay close to the face, they can get cleaved and killed. And you can actually hit Nightbane a little bit before it lands. Let's see. There's a the dead state shield block. Shield slam. This distracting ash reduces chance to hit and needs to be dispelled. Good dispel. Okay, prioritizing shield block here. Just have a smooth pull. Iron shield potion right away. Commanding shout. I want to make this as easy on my healers as I can. Thunderclap, demo shout, five sunders. Commanding shout. That's your checklist. And now I shield slam and I do my rotation. Devastate heroic, shield block. Devastate heroic, shield slam. Nightbane is going to fly into the air. 75%. Does that every 25%. Heroic strike, shield slam. Heroic strike, devastate, shield block. Demo shout, refresh. Resist, demo shout, refresh. Thunderclap. Shield block, shield slam. Revenge, devastate, heroic. Shield block. Shield slam. Air phase, we all stack up with the ranged. We wait for the bone storm. When the bone storm happens, everyone but the tank will run. We put an earthbind totem down. Hunter frost trap totem down. And I mark these, and I devastate. And I tab, and I mark that. I concussion blow that one. I mark this one. I thunderclap all these. I demo shout, I taunt this one back. And I war stomp. And I keep an eye on my health, in case I need to health stone. I'm pulling this one back. They got that one. I'm gonna save up a little bit of rage, and I get ready for the boss to land. Double check my iron shield, 30 seconds. Getting ready for boss to land. I'm in position by the exploded barrel. And I can hit him a little bit before he lands. There's a shield slam. Devastate heroic. He's gonna run at a healer. Okay, we're good. I'm trying not to give the the tail to the the melee. There we go. I need to get ready to iron shield again. Demo shout, thunderclamp. That's my checklist. Commanding shout. We're good. Iron shield. Now we're good. Shield block is up. Rogue strike is up. Revenge is up. Sunder is at five stacks. The boss will sometimes do a bellowing roar, so just keep an eye here. For a cast bar. Smoldering breath is fine. That's just damage. I'm going to refresh Thunderclap Demo Shout. Air phase. We stack up. All right. Rain of Bones. Mark this one. Shield slam it. Mark this one. Shield block revenge it. Mark this one. Thunderclap. Demo shout him. Taunt this one back. No percussion blow that one. Just gonna go ahead and hellstone. Take a little bit of pressure off the healers. Now that they're dying, I'm gonna go back to the barrel. Keep an eye on the boss. Air phase ends in seven seconds. My rage is full, that's great. I'm gonna commanding shout for a little bit of threat. I got parried. I got it. Try to reposition it here, and we're good. I'm in the last stand, make it a little bit easier on the healers. And we're in position. Demo shout is up. Thunderclap is up. Shield block is up. Iron shield is up. Commanding shout is up. We're solid. We're doing our part. Health is kind of low. Okay, we're good. Shield block. Iron shield up in four. Shield slam, heroic. Iron shield. Thunderclamp just expired. Re thunderclamp. Air phase, we stack up. I can commanding shout. Get a little bit of initial threat on. Get ready for bone storm. I'm gonna blood rage. Rain of Bones, whatever. Okay, first one. Devastated. 
shield slam it. Second one, mark it, devastate it. Third one, mark it, concussion blow. Now I thunderclap. I taunt this one, mark it. I'm gonna war stomp. I stunned all of them, except for the front one. Alright, I'm gonna watch my rage. Okay, I have full rage now. I need to get ready for the boss. They're in a bad spot, they need to get away from the spot. Back up. Shield block. Emo shout. Thunderclap. Shield block. Iron shield is good. Challenging shout is good. Shield slam. Shield block. Heroic strike. Devastate. We could bloodlust. It's up. Nice. Usually we bloodlust the final ground phase just to make it fast. Got a little bit of threat pull there. Yep. Execute phase. You do a lot of threat. And I'm in full mitigation as well, so not too much I can do about that. And that's a fight. Chest guard of the connoisseur. Pretty good. Get that DPS gear back on. Endless pit. Uh, there we go. Nice. All right, get one of these. Blood rage for devastate. Ghosts. Commanding shout, keep it up. I'm thinking about the skill of a tank and how it's a combination between the decision making for how you prepare for a pull and then the execution for how you can use your abilities and position yourself because one of the things that could go wrong for say Nightbane and this is the pull of a, a tank which is being greedy with your threat you can itemize for more threat but how much is too much threat relative to how much mitigation you need because if you get too much threat you die if you have more mitigation than you need then you miss out on the opportunity to deal more threat which means the damage can the DPS can do more damage. It's kind of like a ride the lightning. In this case, I'm striking somewhere in the middle for these pulls. For Nightbane, we were pretty much full mitigation. One thing that I could have done to mitigate a little bit more would be to get stamina food instead of hit food. But the reason I don't like to do that is because a huge part of having a good Nightbane is being able to not get parried or dodged too much whenever the air phase ends. So hit rating can be more important than stamina. If you don't have the boss on you, well, your stamina doesn't count for anything. You sit kind of hard. I can take both, I think. I'll put a shield on.
Demo Shout, Cleave, Shield Block, Thunderclap, Devastate, Heroic. Heroic Strike deals more threat than Cleave does. Cleave is more damage, but it also gets you threat on two mobs instead of one. So you've got a little bit of decision making there. Do you want a Heroic for more burst threat on that target, or do you want a Cleave for a little bit more damage to push through the content? Next, we're going to get a bunch of these pulls and pull them into this room. These do mana drain and stuff, but then they give the party mana with their aura when they die. I just did a thunderclap. And these are all channeling drain mana. You can war stomp to interrupt that. You can also just manually pummel it. Moss patrols up and down this hallway. Just doing some shouts for initial threat. Make sure I hold the big one. Demo shout. Doesn't really do a ton this pull because a lot of their damage is from that drain mana. And this guy also does a teleport thing. So I taunt it back. This one. Commanding shout. Get that initial threat. Make sure I have the big one. Thunderclap. Cleave revenge. Demo shout. Just tab through. This one's on the warrior. That's fine. This one's on the mage. I'll taunt that. And also interrupt. You can mix in a whirlwind for fun. Or not. Need to be careful of the boss, I'll just mark it. Commanding shout. Devastate. Underclap. Tab, devastate, tab, devastate. Underclap again. Cleave revenge, devastate. And I got a war stomp. Interrupted that. Okay, we got two more before the boss. We'll wait. This boss's aggro radius is enormous. Be careful. Pulling. Blood Rage. And around the corner. You get threat with your challenging or commanding shout for every party member you buff. So the more people you buff, the more threat you get. Thunderclap. Revenge cleave. Devastate, devastate, devastate. Thunderclap. Demo shout. One more. Man, his patrols. Should be good from here. Boom. Getting threat. We're gonna pull them all the way into the room. I don't know what they're doing out there. It's good to pull the boss. I'm taunting this one, running around the corner. Making sure I have threat the big one. Teleported. And the question is, will it pull the boss? It's exciting. It did not pull the boss. Already checked. 
boss does some sparks. It doesn't really hit that hard. Let's put another one of these on. Greater Rune of Warning. Chest piece. No, I need Hillstone. Let's get another sharpening stone. Pull timer. Oh. Five. The menagerie is for guests. Well, no food buff this fight. I forgot. Haste potion. Party on. Emo shout. Thunderclap, heroic, revenge, devastate, heroic. He does a hateful like mechanic where he hits someone next to him. He was just turning and hitting the warrior, but threat looks good. He's hitting me for how much? Sparks. Four point one K crit, two point eight K hit. It's a pretty simple fight. Put up a demo shout. Just for good tanking practices. Keep up that commanding shout. One way you could think about keeping up Thunderclap and Demo Shout on a fight where you don't exactly need it is you insulate yourself against bad luck. Sometimes the healer has a problem, someone takes an extra burst of damage they didn't expect, and maybe they can't heal you in that moment. If you have Thunderclap and Demo Shout up, that reduces your chances of being killed. We do something dangerous. Last stand, recklessness execute. That's fine. It's no longer operation. Good stuff. Alright. This is the... Basically, ask pull city. People will find ways to pull in this area. Oh my god, 100 roll. I rolled a 61, that's not gonna be 100. Hellstones are good. So we kill that one, we hug left. I'm gonna pull this one. I'm gonna try to pull it back. These mana worms are immune to magic damage. That's part of why you want to build some, bring some physical DPS to carry in. All right, I'm gonna take this one. Generally, if you get a whole bunch of stuff that comes in, it's best as the tank for you to pick up whatever is the biggest, whatever hits the hardest. Keeping up that thunderclap. Keeping up that demo shell. And the shield block too. These arcane protectors hit pretty hard. I'm just 
just gonna pull this. A skip is not a skip if not everyone can do the skip. This library is like failed skip central. You can technically make it through by only pulling these left packs and some of the patrols. But if only one person, if even one person messes up the skip, then you have to pull it anyway. And the skip gets messed up most times. So we pull. That way we can do these fights on our terms. Thunderclap, the little guys. Cleave, Revenge, Shield Slam, Devastate, Demo Shout, Shield Block. You can Concussion Blow them too. pull this guy on our terms. I might pull mana worms too. We'll wait. Let's see what good opportunity we can get. Alright, here he comes. If you really want to be nice to the melee DPS, you can turn the boss so they can attack from the back. But the most important thing is tanking the mob in a place where you're not going to pull other stuff. So we can run around here technically, pulling one of these. Technical jump pull. Jump down the cliff. Thunderclap it. Shield block it. Shield slam it. Revenge. More stomp. Oh, we got another buddy. I tab over, devastate that guy. Shield block, revenge. I'll put an X mark on it. I'm also going to pop a iron shield potion. My health got pretty low there. Nice earth elemental from the shaman. That's a good uh, reaction to being in a scuffed pool. Good pool. Now we can move up. Remember to stay hydrated in your run. up here. There we go. Alright, these are kind of tricky. They will explode when they're low HP, the little ones. So you want to designate stuns. I will stun Skull. Shield slam. Tab devastate, tab devastate. Shield block, under clap. Demo shout. Shield slam. Concussion blow. We got him. Taunting X. Building threat on triangle. 
There's a shade here. It's invisible. I'm gonna hug the right. There it is. Shield bash. Interrupt that. Alright, we're looking good. Don't stand on these things on this. If you're range DPS, it causes stuff to evade and then they heal back to full. Shield block. That's a X, that's a triangle. That taunt us. Nice stun. I stunned X. There's a spell shade, I taunt it. I get dual wield again, get more threat. a bunch of spell shades. We'll wait on mana. Leaves. These don't really hit hard for physical, they just cast spells, you can interrupt them. I'm gonna try to line aside a little bit here. Devastate, Thunderclap, Cleave Revenge, the Demo Shout, just cleaving, taunt that one, Cleave Revenge, Tab, Devastate, I have that one, Tab, I have that one, Tab, I have that one, great, I'll work on this guy, so the Warlock, Thunderclap, Cleave Devastate, Commanding Shout, Refresh, and we're off to see Ill Hoof. Did you know there's a secret passageway there? And you can go through the books? Now you know. There's a boss back here. Pull this one before the boss. Commanding shout, get some threat. Thunderclaps. Cleave revenge. Cleave devastate. And this is the pull before the boss, so if I can end it with full rage, that'd be great. Full rage. Kill imp, kill boss. The boss takes more damage when the imp is dead. Ready check. People love ready checks. Back in MC, I would just charge in and they'd be like, Brian, I wasn't ready. That's why I use ready checks. I'm gonna get a food buff. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Devastate Heroic on Skull. Tab over, Devastate Heroic on X. Now I'm going to switch into Cleavin. Cleave Revenge, Cleave Devastate. We had a shield use, shield slam. This guy sacrifices somebody. I'm going to break the chains. 
can't strand a bolt on you. It's very little damage. Could this 2k, 3k or something? 2.1k? Crazy. Sacrifice, you can target the chains like this. Just right click them. Skull. Leave revenge. Leave devastate. And that's ill hook. One of the easier bosses in here for sure. Lightning capacitor. Oh. What is that? You gain an electrical charge whenever you do a damaging spell crit. Lightning bolt? Oh. Is that good? What do you think? Shades, hold on a side him. Like a triangle, thunderclap, demo shout. One of my healers is not here, so I'm gonna go defensive. Last stand it. So try to interrupt shield bash. Got that one. I can also concussion blow. Lots of tools. Staying alive. bash it. Tab target it. Revenge heroic it. Alright, Shade of Iran. Can definitely dual wield this fight. He does pretty much all spells. The arcane missiles and the fireball hit the hardest. That's usually what people interrupt. Having a warlock for this fight makes dealing with the water elementals a lot easier. They can banish one and fear one, or they can AoE fear. Get everybody to check out. Pops look good. I'm gonna have to refresh those potions in a bit. Elixirs. I wonder if you can charge this guy. This is a tank radius. I'm gonna try. Five, four, three, two. You can. Awesome. I'm just doing heroic devastate and defensive stance. Flame wreath, don't move. Nobody move. Interrupted that fireball. I'm just in berserker stance now. He's casting spells at random people, so. There's not much point in me trying to be top threat. Getting ready to interrupt as well. Nice kicks. Let's get that commanding shout up. Getting ready to pummel. We'll let him shoot Frostbolt. You want to run out of Blizzard if he casts it in your area? You got a pummel there. A whirlwind. More damage. that and you need to run out and use intercept also just use my hellstone interrupted that there's the okay, explosion and let's get back on the boss you can 
cleave this elemental. And now we can execute spam. Execute spam. How exciting. We got him. Oh, is that good? Tank power, Angie, stam. Meh. Oh, I could top off a hellstone. That's great. Now we're moving up to another spite. And chess. The sorceress shades in these pulls deal AoE, so you want to kill those first. They do kind of go invis every now and then. Line of sight pull. Thunderclap on these, Demon Shout. It's mostly spell damage though. I will throw a War Stomp. You can stun all but the Sorceress Shade. Also get a Concussion Blow here. Same thing, source of shade first. Commanding shout up. Everyone's got mana, we're good to go. Devastate heroes on that one. Thunderclap. Cleave, revenge. Cleave, devastate. Thunderclap. Cleave, revenge. Cleave, devastate. Cleave, revenge. You do have a bit of a decision between revenge and devastate. Revenge, when you have the set bonus from tier 4, means your next ability deals more damage, so that's nice. And Rage is the best for um, threat per rage of your abilities. What is it, 2 rage? Yeah. So if you're low rage, revenge is an amazing ability. If you're high rage, you could favor... I want to devastate because I want to sunder the target more for the DPS. Just something to think about. Another Sorcerer's Shade marked at Skull. A pull. I'm also going to line of sight here. Okay, cleave, devastate. Got plenty of threat on Skull. I'm just going to interrupt this. Go Berserker and Whirlwind for fun. Tabbing through. Making sure I have threat. I'll try to interrupt the next one I see. What we got him. Oh, Mountain King book. How did this one get away over there? Alright, now we got some consortium guys. These ones do an ability that lowers your strength and agility by percentage and it stacks. They also do a disarm. So you're going to deal a lot less threat whenever they disarm you. Strength and agility to reduce by 3% per stack. And it stacks up to a max of 15 stacks. Grab him. Commanding shout, initial threat. Rogue strength devastate. Did you know you can still devastate even when you're disarmed? Pretty crazy. All it does is requires a one handed melee weapon. Which means that if you're disarmed and you're dual wielding, you can still devastate because you have a one handed melee weapon in the offhand. It's crazy. 
I guess that means you can't devastate if you have a sword and board. Look at this. I still devastate. Great. We can run across if they're all paying attention. So this is a point where you can do a mage happy surprise time. There's a spellcaster one that has a powerful plus a spell damage buff, which mages can spell steal. The mage in your group may ask to do that. So if they do, you can have people hold DPS, take a bathroom break or something. It's not exactly a speed boost for the run, but it does give them an ability to deal a ton of damage. And it looks pretty on the horses for them. I would say overall it's probably a net minus for speed if you're just trying to clear fast. Alright, I got full rage. Red is brunt, then cow. I'll do blue. J. Phobia. Green. Cow. Brunt. Alright, check. People got their assigns. We know what we're doing. Oh, I need to refresh these. Alright, welcome to Nether Spite. This fight is pretty tricky. It's more of a technical one. Getting those assigns is out. Uh, the red beam gives you a whole bunch of health and auto threat. So you don't really need to worry about beating other people in threat if you have the red beam. I'll tank him over here by the right hand side. And then when you have the red beam, you hold it for 10 stacks and then step away for a little bit. Six, seven, eight. Look at my health. 37. 10. I get off it. And then I just count to five. In my head. Three, four, five. All right. Now I go up another 10 stacks. Could just iron shield potion be responsible here. Okay, I'm gonna get off. 20 stacks. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna go back in. Catch another 10 stacks. And by about 30 stacks, you should be around to where your health was initially. 29, 30. Portal phase is ending. Don't stand in the void zones. Alright, when the portal phase ends, we're going to run over by the window. Vanish phase now. We run. Commanding shout refresh. Alright, with 10 seconds left to go. The new tank for the red beam needs to run in and look for the red portal. You can go in a, a few different places. So that's a nether breath ability. It's pretty hard. I'm going to bandage myself. Okay, me needs to go in and get the red beam. And I need to look for the green beam. There's a portal phase. Blue beam is there. Red beam is back to the right. The warrior needs to get threat. He needs to go by the red beam. And I'm protecting the green beam from touching the boss. This will heal up the boss really fast. Okay, so he's got the red beam. I'm just managing the green beam primarily. Alright, I can berserker stance this. Because I don't have the boss. Give a commanding shout for the red beam tank this phase. And I'm just... DPS in a way, whirlwinds, devastates, heroics, and berserker stance, watch out for void zone. You might get it into execute phase. Nah, probably not. 
we should run to the door here. Okay, banish phase, I think. Yeah, there's more room over here. I think I should be out of range of that. And the breath, who did it hit? Yeah, we're good. So the idea here is just to be as far away from the nether breath as possible. Banish phase is ending soon. I'm going to go defensive stance, eat an iron shield. Put a shield on. It's not letting me do that for some reason. Portal phase, looking for red. There's red. I'm going to last stand, make it easier on my healers. Hellstone, make it really easy on my healers. I've got the boss. I've got the red beam. We're in business. So that nether breath that killed a bunch of people, sometimes if there are totems next to the boss, he'll cast a nether breath right away. So just be aware of that if you're a shaman. I'll let it sit for a few stacks. Take it back. Stacks up to 30. Then we'll just try to DPS them without the red beam. He was out of the green beam. That's what was healing the boss. Okay, I'm going to see if I can intervene over here. Someone needs to take red. Banish phase ending soon. Doing another shout. Also at 2%. Another breath. Let's see if we can execute it. Keep my blood rage up. Getting the executes out. The cold threat. That's fine. I'm killing this guy. Not bad. A little bit sloppy, but we got to demonstrate how the fight works. So the portals can spawn after the first ones. They can spawn pretty much anywhere. Usually the red one starts here. So I tank the boss like this. Over here. And then as you saw, run over by the windows for the first banish stage. And depending on where the boss ended up in banish stage, you might want to run over here back to the starting corner. Because you can max range that nether breath. Pantaloons of Repentance. Have something you need to repent of? Try the Pantaloons of Repentance. Oh, we gotta be careful of these. You can usually skip this guy, but you have to pull this one. We'll see. People are dead at the moment. You know what? I'm going to be responsible, and I'm going to take a quick stand-up break. If you're sitting down for a long period of time, stand up for a bit. Take care of yourself. Rating is really fun, but you only have one body IRL, so take care of it. Try to have good posture, stay hydrated, and take some stretch breaks. Don't sit for too long. It's bad for your circulation. I'll be right back.
Ready check. Stand up, move around. What are they doing? What? on it. We got a lot of torn in this raid. This is four torn. This is a torn. He's a torn. I'm a torn. Rain cow's a torn. That's four torn. Man, this paladin is really dead. This one. this one does a int and spirit debuff. And they also get that spell damage thing that mages can spell steal. They load that. Alright. Here's a repair spot. There is a repair spot by Atum and the Horseman. I guess I should have mentioned that. After that boss, you can hang a left, pull one pack, and then get a repair. Alright. Repair. You can get some reagents there, too. Ready to check. Okay, time to put your thinking cap on. This is the war chief here. The event starts whenever someone takes control of this piece. Waiting on people to get in the room. Get in the room. All right, we're in. Taking control of it. Fun tip, you can walk in front of these pawns if you move it all the way to the front. I can get bloodlust. And the way that you win is by killing this king piece on the other side. You want to watch out for your health. Sometimes the AOE is hitting you when it doesn't look like it should. Destroy them. A bloodlust for him. This cleave has a pretty crazy range. Can just start cleaving now. What ELO is this chess game? Bloodlust. I tend to just pile the bloodlust over the cleave. And I just cleave. Fight this horse. Bloodlust again. Right foot again. Right foot, let's cleave. Left foot, let's cleave. Bloodless, real smooth. Oh man, the horse. Got him. I'll avenge you. I cleave. Oh, three of them. That's some damage. I'm gonna get a crazy parse. Just kidding, there's no parse for this fight. Cleave again. Can move up and start fighting the king. Perhaps a cheat to order. Oh no. Oh, uh, cheats. We gotta get out of that. Medieval cheats. He's getting low. Let's cleave him. The fire's hit me though. We got him. Alright, to end it, you right click control piece here. Looks like a brain. We got it. What loot did we get? You need something. Headdress of the High Potential. These ones hit very hard. I'm going to respect it. Put a shield on. 
There's a patrol that goes Five, by as well. Four, Keep an eye out. Three, I'm gonna pull two, this, Blood Rage, one. and then drop down. Shout. Get initial threat. These are immune to taunt. DPS need to pay attention. Shield slam dex. I devastated skull. Revenge. Heroic devastate. Shield block. And we got a shout in. Shield slam. Revenge. Heroic. Shield block. Demo shout. Alright. We can move it up. Move it up. Where is that patrol? Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. Shield slam it. Shield block it. Very ouch bleed effect. These hit very hard. They also hit fast. Tab Devastate, Heroic that one, Revenge that one. Alright, I'm back on the skull. There's shield Slam. Okay. We're almost done. We did everything, except Prince, including Servant's Quarters, which most people skip. Time so far is 1 hour 52. It's so right around a 2 hour run, if we get this boss down first try. There are things that can go wrong on Prince. He does hit very hard in phase 2. I want to try to end this trash fight with full rage if I can. I'll just hold off spinning rage. And right, we got full rage. Do I have the DPS helm on? Let's put the tank helm on. Adjust it a little bit. Armor ring. I will try dual wielding the start of this fight. But phase two, I'll put a shield on. Get hellstone. Food buff. Get ready to check. Okay. Everybody's ready. Do I still have this on? Yeah, 17 minutes. Nice. Okay, gonna pull. I'll show you the spot where I take him. Shouting, turning, revenge heroic, devastate heroic. Pulling him right over here against this wall. Let's get an iron shield potion up. Most important consume for this fight. This boss does an enfeeble ability on everyone except the main tank at times. Demo shout, resist, demo shout again, got it. Yep, it lowers their health and you can't heal that. They need a line of sight so they don't die to the Shadow Nova, which is casting now. Cast a Shadow Word Pain. 1500 every three. Pretty good. We need to watch 65% is when he goes into angry mode. That's usually when you want a Bloodlust. What I want to do is make sure Thunderclap is up, Emo Shadow is up. And I'll put a shield on. Alright. Oh, 60%, my bad. 60% he goes into his angry mode dual wielding axis. I'm just going to last stand. Make it nice and comfortable for the healers. He does hit pretty hard. And he's hitting super fast now. I still have Thunderclap. I still have Demo Shout. I'm going to refresh the Demo Shout. Refreshing the thunderclap. My last stand is still up. Okay, it's expired. 
You can also shield wall this if you're not super geared. Doing a last stand into a shield wall is a really nice way to mitigate phase two. All right, we're in stage three. So he's not hitting hard anymore. The axes just go around and they try to slap somebody. So I can dual wield again if I want to. Keep that Thunderclap Demo shout. Make sure my tank checklist is good. Let's just haste potion. Party. Revenge heroic. Devastate heroic. We got threat for days. Good stuff. Oh, Gorehound. I am a prince of the Eridor. I am. He's a prince of the Eridor? He looks like a pancake to me. Well, that's Karazhan. Start to finish. Talking with y'all through it pretty much live. Scuff pulls included. Hope y'all learned from this. If you have any tips or tricks or you approach a fight a little bit differently than me, feel free to share in the comments. I'll try to get a guide out for TK and SSC pretty early into phase two, assuming we'll get the bosses down. But yeah, Karazhan guide, pretty big project. Hope you all enjoy it. Best of luck with your loot and your bis. Don't forget to repair before you leave town. Remember to be kind and respectful to your fellow raiders. And from me, Brunt Half a Ton, Mr. Runner, Tolmore, that Mr. Runner Tribe. I'll see y'all in the next one. Ancestors, watch over you.